two types, um, colostrum, your transition, and your mature milk. Now, yes. It's four milk and high milk too, also, right? right. Colostrum is already in there when you go to have your baby, okay? So sometimes you may encounter a mom and she's like, oh, I'm going to breastfeed, but I don't have anything yet. Yes, you do. It was me. Oh, it won't come out. Okay. It takes a lot of work for them to get it out, okay? It is small in quantity. It is rich in nutrients and your antibodies. It is gold, okay? So it is wonderful. It takes time. All right. So it's produced for the first three to four days postpartum. Your milk usually comes in around day three to day five on average. Okay. And like I said, it's high levels of antibodies, proteins, minerals, fat soluble vitamins. It's low in sugar and fat. It's easy to digest. Um, this is wonderful for the newborn. Wonderful, and it also acts as a laxative, so it'll help to like pass that meconium if you haven't had the stool yet. Right. Transition milk is between day five to like two weeks postpartum. Your milk composition will change. You got your lactose in there, your fat, and calories increase. Your mature milk looks more like skim milk, sometimes a little bluish in color. So you may hear, you know, if you're at the doctor's office. Oh my God, and I pumped my milk and it was blue and looked yeah. over. It was blue. fine. Yeah, it looks like blue a bluish uh -huh. And that's fine. It caught, like I said, causes mothers to question whether the milk is rich enough to support their baby. Mature milk contains about 20, uh, 22.5 kilocalories per ounce, and that's just right to meet the need. If you look at a bottle of formula, the, the nurse says, they have about 20 kilocalories. So the breast milk is richer. Yeah. That's if you eat right, because a lot of yes. uh, women that breastfeed, they don't eat yes. right. So you have to eat right. You have to eat right. Yeah. Yeah. You eat right. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Um, protein is lower um, oh, than in the formula. Yes. Is it preferred for, is it preferred for uh, uh, what is the underweight one? Like a premature baby to have breast milk over the the, the formula that has more protein already added to it? They, they say breast milk is best, no matter what, breast milk is best. The only time you would not do that is if there was some kind of contraindication. So mom's like HIV positive, okay, or there's some kind of other issue, then they would say no. But breast milk is best for babies. Um, formula, although I'm not saying it's bad, like a lot of Mom choose to bottle feed their baby. It's your choice. Your, your breast, your body, your choice. Okay. Um, you can supplement them. You, you know, whatever you choose to do. But they say for any baby that is premature, you know what I mean, or just the overall health of newborn, breast milk is They do. All right. So you want to feed, breastfeed your baby every two to four three hours, um, and you want to at least get like a good like 10 to 15 minutes worth of feeding time in. You don't want to go more than 30 minutes per breast because you're going to become a human pacifier, you know. So um, babies will root, they will, you know, suck on their hands, they'll, they'll you know, kick, they'll, they'll be all over the place, okay. So that's the best time for them to be getting onto the breast. It's a little difficult when they're out cold, or if it's a boy, you know, he got circumcised, and he's, you know, oh my God, like, what'd you do? And you gave him the Tylenol, and he's really sleeping, you're trying to get the baby to latch, you might have a little bit of a harder time. So maybe you want to unwrap the baby. Maybe you want to change their diaper. <coughs> maybe you want to take, like, a little wipe and kind of, like, you know, wipe their cheek, just to kind of wake them up a little bit, and, you know, they'll be a little bit more ready to go. Crying is often a late sign of hunger. So by the time your kid's crying, because they're so hungry, Aww. that kid's frustrated. So try shiny. to be on top of your feeding time, okay? You want to alternate breast um, with feedings. You don't want to just stick with one breast. You can have one large breast and one not so large breast. Mm -hmm. So if you do both sides, great, but just flip-flop them each time. Um, Q 
cues that the baby is receiving adequate feed, so um, slowing of the sucking pattern, so they're going to be drawing in the milk, okay? They fall asleep at the breast, okay? This is what they're using to eat, okay? And this tires them out. Not to mention the oxytocin that you're releasing. Yeah, you know what I mean? We'll make some sleep both okay. of you, mommy and the baby, okay? And the breast will eventually feel soft and empty. When they're full, they're more firm, okay? Um, the kid has at least six wet diapers, so they're getting plenty to drink. Um, they've had several stools, so you know that things are working. And it's gaining weight, okay? So these are the different positions I was talking about as far as holding your baby for breastfeeding. You always want to support the head and neck. And you also want to support your breast. The kid is not strong enough to be able to hold itself to your breast and then you just let it go, okay? You want to support both. And then these are different hand positions. And if you notice, your nipple needs to go all the way back to the soft palate, okay? So if the baby is just on the tip of the nipple, it is not lapped properly. You want to break that suction by sticking your finger in the corner of its mouth, breaking the suction, reposition, and put it back on, okay? You're going to end up with cracks and blisters and issues, okay? All right? Sucking patterns. You would um, sometimes hear them when they're on there, okay? When it's soft, they're swallowing, okay? If it's loud, like, they're not on there, okay? Like I said, finger in the corner of the mouth, break the suction, reposition. You need to teach this, this baby what to do. It takes a good two weeks to establish a good routine. So you may be frustrated when you're home for you know, three days postpartum, or you know, a week postpartum, but I can't do that. Yes, you can. You need to practice, you need to work with your child. And you always have to stress to mom, don't freak out. Don't stress out because they sense it. Okay, they sense when you're all worked up and then they're gonna get worked up and then they don't wanna latch. So you need to calm down and feed your baby. Alright? Like again, like I said, sleepy baby, unwrap them, change their diaper, stroke their cheek, massage their back. Multiple births, so with twins, you can do one baby per breast. Okay? Or if you have like triplets or whatever, you're pretty much you can breastfeed and then pump, however you want to do it. Premature births, uh, moms can pump their milk. They can store their milk. Um, most, the NICUs have refrigerators, so if your baby is so premature that they're not eating yet, you can store your milk in the refrigerator. It is considered a blood product, so it needs to be labeled properly. They need to identify that milk to the baby before they feed it. Um, and, you know, it's great for them. It can last a long time in the freezer, right? It can last a long time, depending on like how you freeze it. Yes. How old would they be when they put the meat in? Um, like really preterm. So if you have like, you know, a 24 week or a 25 week or you're not they're getting IVs. Oh my god. They're getting IVs. Oh, yeah. That's the total concentration. Yeah. Like you moms will, like, you know, if you got a really, really preterm baby, they're not gonna be giving them breast milk yet. They're going to be giving them their, their fluids that way. And then mom, in the meantime, can pump. And sometimes they get like little drops in their in their bottles or the syringe. You can actually um, soak up that bit of breast milk on a Q-tip and just kind of rub it inside their mouth. And they'll be able to maybe like kind of get something off of that. So what do they do when they eat? Like it's like the, um, like the feet? No, just through, just through the their IVs. Like them. they have, you know, they get their glucose through there. They get everything through their lungs. Yeah, yeah. They get and they'll have lines through their um, umbilicus. So and then you just store the milk, and then when they're ready to move on to like eating breast milk, um, you can do it that way. Um, storing your breast milk, you can leave it at room temperature for four hours. Okay. Other than that, you want to either refrigerate it or in the freezer. Um, stick to, um, you don't want to, the leukocytes may stick to glass, but are, they're not destroyed. Um, use clear, hard plastic bottles that are not dull or cloudy in color. Okay. Uh, 
um, in the freezer up to three months. Freezing can destroy some antimicrobial factors in the milk. Um, Mm -hmm. it'll, yeah, it'll separate, yeah. Oh, we're, it's an Amber Alert for Joey Long. He's last seen around the autistic support office. Amber Alert for Joey Long. Last seen around the autistic support office. Mm -hmm. um, you want to run the milk under warm water to, to thaw it. You don't want to microwave it. And um, you don't want to sit there. Some people do, you know, like you can have like a bottle warmer and, you know, that takes a few minutes and maybe, you know, they're, they're being impatient and they try to microwave it, but you can actually burn the child. So you don't want to do that. Um, as far as weaning is concerned, if you want to wean the baby or move on to like bottling at night so dad can do it, you can actually put ice packs to your breast. So, like your body knows, like don't make milk, like an alarm, don't make milk at this time. Um, and you just do one feeding a day until you completely leave. It is. Are you watching? Thank you. HIV, 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 HIV um, is contraindicated. They, no, no, no. Um, also, women with pulmonary TB, um, and then certain meds can pass through the breast milk. So, you know, if moms. You know, she takes a perfect set of motion. Cancel the Amber Alert. Cancel the Amber Alert. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, post delivery, mom takes her Percocet and Motrin. Yes, the Percocet will pass through the breast milk. It is safe to take for um, for breastfeeding, otherwise, it would not be prescribing it to you. You're only taking one tablet, two if it's, if it's absolutely necessary, um, and you're only taking it for a short period of time. Um, Formula, um, there's three major brands. It's Enfamil, Stimulac, and Good Start. They're all the same. It's like Coke, Pepsi, and Dr. Pepper. Pick one, okay? So powder is less expensive and um, easy to prepare. Um, but, and they have the ready-made, which is more expensive, yeah. So, um, the powder. It's a thinner consistency. The ready-to-feed feet is thicker, but um, I find that a lot of people say the ready-to-feed is um, a little bit harder for them to digest. Like they'll spit up more with the ready-to-feed than they do with the powder. I don't know if it's just the way that it is. Soy is just a, just a variation of it. So if you have like you know lactose intolerance or you know something runs in the family. You don't want to give them regular milk. You want to give them soy, like a soy-based um, product. That's fine too. So they all have different kinds. What about um? Yes, I'm not sure what's going on, but carnation milk. The good start. Yes. Or are you talking about no, the top? Carnation milk. Carnation milk. You made your own formula. No. That's how it was back in. Yeah. That's how I heard. No, that's I did. I saw some lady. She had a newborn baby. I made four and cart and cart and carnation milk, and I was thinking. As far as I know, I haven't heard of them giving carnation like to the babies. I I wouldn't recommend it. I've never seen it, so I well that's from um, people made their own formula back in the day, right? Uh, you put your own healthy stuff. It's better than that crap right there. Okay, you make it yourself, and then you just give your child the own the vitamins. The vitamins. Okay. That's it. You can't, I mean, you know, whatever works. Yeah. Put it this way. When in doubt, ask your pediatrician, and if they're, you know, okay with it, then you should be okay. I think you're talking about it. I don't know. That's why you don't go with bottles, you don't want to prop them. Um, you can run the risk of the baby aspirating it, and they can't really, you know, support the bottle themselves. They can't do this yet. And you're missing out on that bonding time between mom and baby. So even though you're bottling the baby, you can still bond with your baby. So you want to do that. Um, prepared formula can stand um, for no more than two hours room temperature. But if the child is actually like drinking from it and you put it down, you don't want to let it go like more than an hour because otherwise you start throwing bacteria in there. So get rid of it. Burping with the breastfed baby. They will burp, but they don't burp as often. Your nipple is basically filling their mouth, so they're not suction, like sucking in as much air. Um, with a bottle baby, they're sucking in tons of air, so you're going to need to burp them more often. 
Um, exfoliation. Nurse, do you have a patient in the office? Nurse, a patient in the office? Sorry. You, uh, exfoliation is the unique healing process that allows the healing of the placental site without scarring. Okay? But when you have scarring in the uterus, the next pregnancy, when it goes to implant, it's not going to go there. It's going to have a difficult time implanting if it's in that spot. Okay, you might have some issues with placental attachment there. Okay. It's complete within 16 days. Um, and the placental site itself takes about um, six weeks. So that's why I say weeks. Six weeks. It's six weeks for anything. Yeah. You know, let me tell you. You had labor. You had delivery. You know, things were swollen. Things got you know stretched or they tore. You need time to heal. You really need time to heal. So that's when they when they stress nothing in the vagina for six weeks, they mean nothing in the vagina for six weeks. Okay. Subinvolution of the uterus um, to return to pre-pregnancy state. Uh, it's a failure of that to happen. It usually is caused by retained placental fragments. So like I said, if you're in the delivery room and you guys go for clinical and you see a delivery, go over and look in the placental basin and see and see, like ask him to show it to you. You should, you know, see they're both sides, it should be complete. There shouldn't be any pieces missing. If there are, most likely they're still in mom and she's gonna have a hard time contracting and, and getting her tears back to normal. Your uterus is about, immediately after birth is about 2.2 um, pounds or a kilo. It decreases to about 500 grams during the first week. By the second week, it drops even more to about 12 ounces. Um, before you even hit six weeks postpartum, your uterus is like back to where it should be, or it should be that way. Um, your, your cervix after birth is soft. By 18, week, 18 hours, it's regained its usual form. It gradually will close around two weeks, and but it never regains its original appearance. So if you look at a cervix of a non-pregnant woman, and you look at the cervix of someone who has had a baby before, it, there are differences that they can see between the two. Okay. Um, the little slit. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Yeah. Um, the scent of the uterine fundus is about a centimeter a day. All right, right after birth, it should be at the umbilicus or just below it, right after birth, okay? So mom delivered, you're feeling her fundus, it should be at the umbilicus. By 10 days postpartum, like I said, you shouldn't even be able to feel that uterus anymore. The only time that you're gonna feel a fundus and it's like up two and it's okay, or up one and it's okay, maybe mom had twins, or you know, she had a lot of fluid, she had polyhydramnios, and her uterus needs to just get back down to where it was. But if it's a singleton pregnancy, no complications of any kind, she should not be up, up one or two. It should be going down. Yes? Now for um, C-section, does the, um, does it automatically go to the nose or the doctor would No, I mean, they, with the C-section, they're going to, you know, clean the uterus, they're going to, you know, suture it back together. They're going to try and massage it to get it to firm up. They'll put it back into the mom, close everything up, and it should be at the umbilicus. Does the uterus come out of the body? Or they will take the, once the baby's out, they will take the uterus out so they can clean everything out and then suture it back up. And then put it back in. It's not. All right, so your after pains, your in, intermittent uterine contractions occur for the first two to three days. Like I said, it's, it's normal for that to happen. Um, oxytocin is the lovely culprit. It strengthens the uterine contractions and compresses the blood vessels, okay? So infant suckling, suckling can, can do this. So breastfeeding will do this. They'll give moms um, oxytocin post-delivery to help do this. Um, and you can give them ibuprofen for it, just, you know, for menstrual cramps. Lochia, postpartum vaginal discharge contains blood from the placental site, particles of necrotic um, decidua and mucus. It has a normal fleshy odor to it, similar to a menstrual cloud. It comes in rubra, which is that bright red, you know, sometimes it has small clots in it. The serosa, which is like a pinky brown, no clots in it. 
and then the, the yellowish white. Okay? It should eventually like, transition itself. Um, this is an estimated uh, lochial flow. Now I have to add, the last picture over here, even though it says large, to me that's saturated. Okay, that's heavy. I would call that like extra large. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot. You should not see that much blood. Um, post delivery, you're going to have a little bit. You know, small is okay. Even moderate is okay, but you should never have large. Large, there's something going on. So what about yeah. like um, small clot? Little clots are okay because they come out very they they get, and they're fine. Like you know, little clots. But if you go and you press on the fundus and you get a clot that's like this big, you need to let somebody know about it. Like what's going on that she had a clot in there? You know, was she collecting blood and all of a sudden it expelled this clot out? Is her uterus firm? You know, so when you're feeling a fundus, you want to be looking at their pad too. Okay, you want to see what's coming out. All right. Um, Locule flow after three to four weeks, late bleeding may be from an infection or some involution. Um, also, if there's continued um, cirrhosis or alba, could be an infection, or if there's an offensive odor. Um, endometritis is an infection um, of the endometrium. It could be, you know, fever, pain, abdominal tenderness, continued bleeding. Um, the vagina post-delivery could be edematous and could be bruised. Um, if mom's, you know, sitting up during her labor, it's going to be swollen down there. It's going to be swollen just from pushing. It's going to be swollen from delivery, bruised just from stretching. You know, when they're sitting there trying to, you know, give her her perineal massage and they're, they're in there, they can cross some bruises. By three weeks, it resumed its pre-pregnancy appearance. Uh, by six weeks, it's pretty much almost regained its pre-pregnancy form. Some women will notice some dryness, which usually will disappear once every ovulation and her flow begins again. Uh, the perineum, often edematous and bruised from delivery. You want to assess the type of vaginal discharge, unusual swelling, discoloration, healing of the tissues, and discomfort. You want to use RITA, which is another little acronym for it. So, do you know what RITA stands for? You said RITA? RITA. R E E D A. No. Um, Relaxin is a hormone um, that basically does just that, it relaxes the joints. Um, so that hormone will decrease. It ha it, you'll, you'll see a lot of women will just say, oh, my feet got really big during the pregnancy. I feel like everything's just loose anymore. And that's relaxed and kind of relaxing everything to kind of prepare the woman for delivery. And then post-delivery, that will start to go away and things will kind of shift back. Progesterone also decreases, so your muscle tone will improve. And um, you can also have um, a separation of the abdominal muscles. Ooh. Yeah. 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 I mean, if you had a C-section and that, you know, happened during, like, your pregnancy, then they would be able to, you know, kind of see some kind of separation. But if you have a bad delivery, you're not oh, going to so really, you, you you're not going to know, like, um, for certain. Like, you'll feel, like, more weak in the middle because your, your muscles aren't tight anymore. So long, don't they so They can. It just, it depends on your position. Like, you know, like, yeah. So, mine's be separated right now, and I wouldn't know. You would just feel weaker around the middle. Well, you would have to exercise and move there. there. How would it rain really good? Um, you can use, lose about 200 to 500 mLs of blood during the batch delivery, which is considered normal. Um, you'll get rid of your placenta. You have rapid reduction of your uterus. And the mobilization of your body fluids that you accumulated. So you'll see, you know, hear a lot of moms like, oh, I'm sweating all the time. Or, I'm, Know, peeing all the time. That's your body getting rid of all those fluids, okay? Um, you want to prevent hypovolemia, okay? Um, just because, you know, she may put out a lot of urine, you know, what's her blood loss? Like what's 
going on. Uh, and um, a deep, like when it, say they were in labor for a few days, would a demon and like their feet be removed from all the fluid? They can, because you know, if you're you know you're an induction, you're there for two days, you're really not moving around too much, you're in bed, they're pumping you full of fluid. Yeah, you're gonna have some edema in your lower extremity. So you would just try to put them away. You can, yeah. And you, you have some edema there just at the end of your pregnancy. Yeah. You know, just from the pregnancy itself. And then when you get during the labor, and that will eventually go away. But just for your own comfort, you should definitely can put a pill on your Oh, yeah, that's fine. Um, like I said, you're gonna diuresis and diaphoresis and get rid of all that fluid. And especially if you're breastfeeding at night, a lot of moms will say, oh, I'm having night sweats, I'm always hot, you know, your body is just getting rid of all of that excess. All right. Blood values, the first 72 hours, um, you're gonna see some major changes. You're gonna have a temporary rise in your hematocrit, your hemoglobin. Um, it will return back to normal within two to four weeks. Leukocytes, your white blood cells can be as high as 15,000 or higher without an infection. Okay. They will return to normal within 10 days. Um, coagulation, your fibrinogen levels return to normal within two weeks, um, increasing uh, the risk of thrombosis formation. So that's why it's important to get these moms out of bed. Don't sit there and say, oh, no, I can't move, I'm so sore and I'm tired. But honey, you're also developing a blood clot, you know, like you're at risk for it, so you need to get up and move around. And they can go a little bit like hands. They can, yeah. Up to the bath, you know, if you're up to the bathroom, walk to the nursery to get mm -hmm. your baby, you know, walk the hallway, or just, you know, get out of bed and walk around in your room if you want to, if you don't want to go out, you know. Or when you're home, you know, you can walk outside, get some fresh air. You don't have to be on the treadmill, but just get yourself <laughs> I'm going to around. This way. Get yourself moving around. Dyspnea and tachypnea are hallmark signs of a pulmonary embolus and um, varicose veins diminish. Um, orthostatic hypotension, so what happens when this, when this occurs? Yeah. 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 So mom is, you know, in bed, she's gonna get up to the boy, um, she sits up and all of a sudden she's like, oh, okay. okay? So don't, you have to get these moms up slowly, Make sure that they're okay. Sit them at the edge of the bed. Let them get their bearings. Slowly rise. And if they're fine, bless you. Walk to the bathroom. Okay. Temperature. Um, mom may have a little bit of a higher temp postpartum. Um, but you don't want it to be higher than what she's normally been running. Okay. Anything that's like 100.4 greater could be some dehydration. Could be some kind of infection. Okay, so you just want to be mindful of her temp. Um, also, breast enforcement can cause short-term elevation of temp. Uh, so, again, her breast milk's coming in, she's going to get those hot flashes. Okay, so I'm just burning you know. Pulse, in the first 68 days, it will decrease, but it will eventually go back to its normal rate. Um, elevated, pulse, uh, elevated pulse could be blood loss, infection, pain, Cardiac issue. Your blood pressure should remain the same. Um, a decrease will indicate blood loss. So, um, like my baby, uh, I was helping my coworker yesterday. She had a C section. Everything went fine. In recovery, she ended up losing a total of 1,500 cc's of blood. Her blood pressure was like 40 over 20. Oh my God. Okay, so yes. Yeah. Things can go downhill quick. So when people lose weight, also? No. Well, just fluid. It's not necessarily like the weight. It's just the fluid. So what did they do for? She got blood. She got blood transfusion. Yeah. So after that happened to her, whatever. Um, was she was she always get a little colder than usual? She was freezing. She was freezing. Like, she was shivering. Would she still be cold? No, yeah, she'll be okay. Like she was fine. Like before I left, before I left for the day, like she was actually fine. Like getting back to, like back to herself. Yeah. She looked. She lost a lot of blood quickly. Yeah. So her her signs tanked. She was cold. You know. So they gave her her blood transfusion. They kept her. You know, for observation. But 
Um, an elevation of blood pressure accompanied by a headache is a different called wax with gestational hypertension. Um, postpartum uh, delivery is usually the treatment of it, um, but other than that, if, it's, if it continues postpartum, you need to be aware of it. Mom um, could get really, really sick very quickly. Uh, urinary system. So mom's had this pressure sitting on her bladder all this time. This baby's like, you know, putting pressure on her. She does, always has to pee, always has to pee. So she had a very long labor, very long delivery. It was hard, a lot of pressure. All of a sudden, I can't pee now. So you want to be very careful of how, she, if she empties her bladder. You have to measure her output and make sure she's able to do it. If she goes to the bathroom, she voids. And she comes back and she's like, I still feel like I have to go. I just can't empty anymore. You might have to scan her bladder to see if she's got any kind of like retention in there. Um, so I know it's major, major, major when it comes to Constipation, it, it can happen for the first few days. Mom comes in. They usually tell them don't eat anything, especially if they're a C-section. They can't have anything from the night before. They're really not eating the day of surgery. They have clears. So they're really not eating for like a day or two. And then we're giving them narcotics on top of it. So they're gonna be pretty constipated. And within three days though, they should be back to normal. If they need to have a stool softener, that's fine too. Okay. Um, breast milk, uh, breastfeeding as far as like food and nutrition, maintain your nutrition, at least 500 calories extra a day. Like you did during your pregnancy and drink at least 16 ounces of fluid. Um, between your feet. So you want to hydrate yourself, you want to eat right, you want to sleep, you know, all the things that you're most likely not doing postpartum because you're exhausted, right? Um, carpal tunnel. Some women will complain of carpal tunnel during their pregnancy. That's just because that excess water, like the fluid on their body, will compress the nerves. So they'll get that, that pain and numbness in their wrists. So once all that fluid shifts and leaves, that, that'll go back to normal. A lot of a lot of things you need a lot of things change in your body. Uh, as far as your skin's concerned, so any kind of stretch marks, they will burn. Any kind of hair growth that was like you know you taking your prenatal vitamins, you got this thick, beautiful, shiny hair, and then everything is, just falls out. <laughs> It'll fall out. Uh, things will stop. You know, um, you may have. Uh, some redness or some darkening, um, like around the nipples, they'll get really dark during the pregnancy, and then they'll lighten up like, afterward. Um, or any kind of like redness or other marks they'll eventually be. Um, but the stretch marks never go away. Your endocrine system, your hormones, bottle feeding, um, your hormones will return back to normal about three weeks. Breastfeeding, it will take a little bit longer. And breastfeeding is not a form of birth control. You can still get pregnant breastfeeding. Okay? Yeah. Prolactin promotes breast pr uh, milk production and ejection. And it uh, stimulates the alveolar cells in the breast. Oxytocin triggers the milk ejection when they have been tucked on the nipple. Um, it also will stimulate the uterine contractions. And like again, day three postpartum, your breast is really <coughs> well with milk when it comes in. Breast engorgement can be painful. So if mom is not breastfeeding and she's bottle feeding, you must stress to her she has to wear a tight fitting bra. She can put ice packs to her breasts. Avoid hot water in the shower to hit the front. Well, hot water is going to help dilate everything and just let down. So warm. Warm water to the back. Okay. That's going to help bring it on. You want to avoid, um, you want to avoid breast and nipple stimulation, so you don't stimulate the breasts. Yes. Oh, this is not breastfeeding. You're not breastfeeding. You put cabbage. You put cabbage leaves, cold cabbage leaves on them. It cooks it. It well, because well, you're so hot from you know like your body yeah, produces milk. And you put in a cold cabbage leaf and then like no, I fell asleep and woke up and came. Cook, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it just stress to them. Tight bra for 72 hours at least. Um, ice packs, frozen peas, 
whatever works. Um, if you are breastfeeding and you want to wear a nursing bra, that's fine. Otherwise, you can just let them go. Okay. Uh, ovulation and menstruation uh, for a bottle baby, non-lactating mom, will usually return within about a month. And then your menstruation will return about three months later. For a lactating woman, um, ovulation about a month. Menstruation, maybe within six months. Everybody's a little different. It's going to be a little longer sometimes. Uh, weight loss. Okay, so say you have an eight pound baby. So you have eight pounds there. You have, you know, your placenta, which is about a pound. Maybe a pound, a little bit. So just say nine pounds. You got at least a pound of fluid. So you got yourself like a nice little quick weight loss there. <laughs> then you have all the fluid that's on you. So you can see a dramatic um, weight loss in that first few weeks after birth, just with everything shifting and coming off. Um, and then everything will go right back to where it was. <laughs> so Why is it that some ways when they breastfeed, things lose a lot of weight? It's just because you're 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 burning up all the like you're using up all those calories that your body is working to produce the milk. Even though like you're eating more, you know, you're supposed to be healthy, but you're eating more, your body's working to produce that milk every every two hours, every two hours, every two hours, and they do tend to drop um Psychologic changes. Mood swings, very common, okay? Um, you can, it's related to a rapid decline in your estrogen and progesterone. Um, maybe mom feels a little insecure about everything, so all of a sudden, you know, she doesn't feel like she's doing a very good job. Or maybe she's, you know, all giddy about having her baby and doing all things.
interference with mom's maternal role, um, her being able to, to get a hold of it. What's her maturity level? Are we dealing with a teen mom that doesn't really get it yet? Or are we dealing with, you know, a 40 or 50 year old who is, you know, she was career focused and now we're, you know, trying to have a family so she has a baby later on in life. So what, what factors are influencing her as far as taking a hold of her uh, maybe she had the baby go to the nursery, she wasn't feeling too hot for the first like day or two, so she didn't really get that bonding to start, so that, you know, that was minimized. Maybe she's by herself. Maybe, you know, she's either the team or, or the, you know, the career of the professional, and dad's not in the picture on either end of the spectrum. Or, you know, maybe she does have support, but Dad's just there. I gotta work. I gotta go. Okay. See ya. You know, so or maybe she just doesn't feel well. Postpartum blues happens to about 70% of the population. Okay, um, it lasts for a few days. After, from a few days after birth to about 10 days, um, they have tearfulness. They have insomnia. They feel, you know, I don't want to eat. I, I'm, you know, I don't think everything went well. What, you know, what could have been different? So. While mom's trying to breastfeed and eat her extra 500 calories, all this stuff's going on. So you can see where a lot of this stuff will kind of bombard her in the beginning, all right? So she needs to be sleeping, which she can't. She needs to be eating, which she doesn't feel like it. She needs to be, you know, taking care of herself, but I just, I can't, I can't do this, I can't do this. All right, so a lot of this stuff is hitting mom at the same time. Postpartum depression lasts longer. It's more than two to three weeks. It's like she can't get out of bed. She has no interest in the baby. No appetite. Psychotic behavior. Psychotic. Psychotic. Like She's suicidal. Or, 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 or harming the baby. Or drowning her other children. Or, you know, setting the house on fire. What does it? Is it like a hormone that goes off? I'm not. My husband's co years ago. He came home from bed. <laughs>
and then postpartum support. Refer her, set her up. If there's things available in the community that she can use, definitely let her know about them. Um, as far as um, care management after delivery, um, it's per protocol, like per facility, but um, mom, you're doing her vitals, her fundal uh, assessment, the consistency amount of bleeding, um, baby to breast, assess the baby when it goes to the nursery. Um, so basically what you want to do when you go in to do your postpartum assessment, start from the head and work your way down to the <coughs> okay? So you go in, hi, I am so-and-so, I'm your nurse today. Check the patient's bracelet. What's your name? What's your birthday? Two identifiers, okay? How are you feeling? How's your pain? She's talking to you. She's awake. She's alert. She's oriented. Listen to her heart and lungs, okay? How are your breasts feel? Are you breastfeeding? Are you not breastfeeding? Do you have a tight bra on? How, or if you are breastfeeding, how is the breastfeeding going? Do you need help setting up with a pump? Move down, listen to bowel sounds. Have you passed any gas? Have you had a bowel movement? How's your appetite? You know, how are things going? Are you able to empty your bladder? Do you feel like you're emptying it completely? You know, when's the last time you went? Feel or fundus. How does your fund, you know, how does it feel? Is it firm, is it midline? Is it off to the side? If it is, you need to get up to pee. How's her bleeding? Is it small, is it moderate, any clots? Look at it. Look at her bottom if she was in batch delivery and see if she, if she had any lacerations or episiotomy, what's it look like? Does she have any redness? Any edema? Any ecchymosis? Any drainage? And uh, is her bottom approximated? That is your read up. Okay? Redness, edema, ecchymosis, drainage or discharge, and approximation. Redness, edema, ecchymosis, 